I recently read a piece in Electric entitled Tesla Auto Bidder is now managing over 1.2 gigawatt hours of energy storage. This is incredible news and it could eventually allow us average consumers to make money while we sleep. But I've heard from a number of viewers who are confused as to just what Auto Bidder is and how it works. Let's take a look at it and why it's already a game changer. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So in this video, I'm going to reference three electric articles over the past like year, year and a half or so. I'll put the links in the description, of course. Anyway, I've had several people ask me questions regarding what exactly auto bidder is and how it works. So that's what we're gonna talk about. Let's start off with what Tesla itself has to say about auto bidder. Quote, Auto Bidder provides independent power producers, utilities, and capital partners the ability to autonomously monetize battery assets. Auto Bidder is a real-time trading and control platform that provides value-based asset management and portfolio optimization, enabling owners and operators to configure operational strategies that maximize revenue according to their business objectives and risk preferences. End quote. What in the world does that corporate speak actually mean? Well, at its most basic heart, it means you buy up charge when it's less expensive and you sell it back when it's more expensive. That's essentially what's going on. But of course, the actual process of that is much, much more complicated. As always, the devil is in the details. So some of the things to pull out of the quote, number one is that it's real time, which means it's operating it like on the microsecond level, not something that it takes a lot of sort of pre-planning or whatever to do. So it can hit these things very, very rapidly. Also in the quote is that it's both a trading and a control platform. So that means that it's controlling power, but it's also trading, which means that you're making money off of it. And finally, I think the end of the quote is kind of interesting when they talk about your risk preferences. So obviously there is some risk involved in this procedure, and we're gonna talk about that a little bit more going forward. So first of all, how do you buy and sell electricity? Isn't electricity, I think most people think of electricity more like water, where it kind of comes from a water tower and it goes into your house, and there's no way to reverse that, at least not easily. But electricity is very different than that. If you have solar panels on your roof and your electric company agrees to it, you can actually sell the electric company some of your power during the you know afternoon when it's very, very sunny outside. So it's that reversibility of electricity that's really at the heart of this. Now, currently, auto bidder only works on a commercial scale. Supposedly, according to Elon Musk and Tesla, it's going to eventually come to us consumers, but right now it only works for commercial operations. So I, you know, <laughs> unfortunately, all the stuff that I'm going to talk about doesn't really exist for us normal consumers just yet. Anyway, from the title of the one article, obviously Tesla is managing 1.2 gigawatt hours of energy with the system. So, and that's not just one system, of course, that's everywhere around the globe, but that's not an inconsequential amount of energy that they're dealing with. So that's pretty amazing that AutoBidder is working and making decisions about that much energy. So let's think about an analogy for just a minute. If you all will cast your minds back about a year from now, actually just about a year ago, uh, do you remember when oil actually became negative? Like a barrel of oil, they would actually pay you money? <laughs> At the time I remember going like, man, I need to speculate on this. If I just had like a really, really big parking lot that I could take, uh, you know, hundreds of barrels of oil and somebody would pay me to take the barrels of oil and set them in the parking lot. And then I could wait till now, right? If I just waited one year, they're back up to being a very, you know, not super high, but they're back up to a kind of a normal level of, of cost per barrel. I could have then sold it and I could have made a ton of money just by basically sitting on it. So that's essentially what's going on here. You've got a commodity, which is electrons or electricity, and you, and, and they vary not nearly as slowly as oil, it's extremely rapid. The, the cost of energy is constantly fluctuating on a commercial basis. And so essentially what's going on is that the software, this auto bidder software is adjusting itself constantly. It's looking for if it can you know, purchase electricity, essentially because you've got these batteries, right? So if the battery is half empty, you can purchase energy if it's very cheap right at the moment. And then alternatively, you can flip right around again and you can sell it very, very rapidly if the price goes up. So even though the price might be fluctuating on a second by second or minute by minute basis, you can be making decisions about that. So if you've got like, again, like a half full battery essentially, and let's say it's like, you know, a hundred megawatt battery system or something. And so you've got 50 megawatts of power. That means you can take in another 50 megawatts if the, if the price of electricity is cheap, or you could give out 50 megawatts if the price of electricity is very expensive. 
And so that allows you to make money. It also allows you to load balance the grid because one of the biggest problems with the electric grid is that the amount of electricity people use is not consistent. Uh, when you're sleeping, generally you use a lot less electricity. The most common very high peak time and when we have to pay the most for electricity is during the afternoons in the summertime, right? So 2 to 7 p.m. I believe in Georgia is the peak rates during the summer, only June through September. And that's when the air conditioner is all running. People are getting home from work. You know, there's just a ton of electricity that's being used. So that's the time it's expensive. And that's when you, of course, you would want to be able to sell your electricity back. But anyway, on a commercial level, Tesla has been doing this for years now. And their mega packs with the auto bidder software are already doing this kind of activity at a 1.2 gigawatt hour scale. So anyway, companies participating in this are using their large-scale batteries to make money by charging and discharging the batteries at advantageous times. And that is what's called energy arbitrage, which is just kind of like buying and selling at a good rate. And of course, you can have monetary arbitrage and a lot of other things too. But that's the term that's used for buying and selling at a good time. And of course, there is a degree of gambling with this because of course, you might buy at what you think is a cheap time, but then it goes down more. And you can sit on it for a while, but there might come a time when you have to sell. So, so, you know, again, it's sort of like the stock market where you might put a, a short on something. And so you're like, you're predicting that the price is going to go down in that stock, but you only have a couple of days or a month or something like that before you have to pay it off. So if the price continues to go up and you've shorted it, then you're going to lose money. Same thing with electricity. You're taking some risk involved with this. If you purchase at a certain number of dollars per kilowatt hour and you predict that that's going to go up, but it goes down instead, you could actually lose money. So that's the reason why there is a risk profile involved in this auto bidder. But in addition to money, the auto bidder software actually performs two other very, very important functions. Number one is grid stabilization. So again, you can't have the grid like having excess power in it and then having too little power or else you get those brownouts or else you can get all sorts of bad things can happen with that. And the second thing is that you can get rid of peaker plants, which are incredibly expensive to build and incredibly expensive to operate and are terrible for the climate. They tend to be things that produce a lot of pollution because they can come online very, very quickly. So batteries are way, way faster than that. And they're also much cleaner. One other term that I hadn't seen before, but in these articles, they talk about the Opticaster, which is apparently the heart of Tesla's auto bidder software. I assume the name comes from something like optimal timing forecaster or optimal forecaster or something like that. Anyway, this Opticaster is AI based or machine learning based and is essentially a futures market for electricity, but run on a sub second timing scale. Here's a quote from the article. Quote, Ma's team is also behind another lesser known Tesla product called Opticaster. Opticaster is Tesla's intelligent software designed to maximize economic benefits and sustainability objectives for distributed energy resources. As the fundamental machine learning and optimization engine for Tesla energy software, it forecasts and optimizes energy in real time. Facility managers, business owners, and renewable developers use Opticaster to reduce energy spend, increase renewable energy consumption, and deliver clean power to the grid during times of need. Tesla claims that Opticaster has already, quote, accumulated over 100 million hours of operational experience, delivering tens of millions of dollars in value from OPEX savings and grid service revenue to thousands of Tesla customers globally, end quote. So again, this is like a microsecond stock trading, but for electricity instead. It's fascinating that they talk about this being real time. It basically means that they are able to do this forecasting and make these decisions almost instantaneously, which is pretty amazing. So again, what Opticaster is doing here is buying up power from sources when it's cheap. And of course, the important part is that it's forecasting exactly when that's going to happen and then selling it back when it's needed and expensive and of course forecasting that element too. And of course using this, utility plants can make a ton of free money off of just buying and selling at the right time because it's basic economics, it's supply and demand. By the way, as a little side note, forecasting with AI is a ton of fun. I did a class project a couple of years ago based on data from a solar plant near Macon, Georgia, and we could use weather metrics to extremely precisely model how much solar would be available in 24 hours based on the current weather conditions. So I assume with a lot more variables and with a more sophisticated machine learning algorithm, basically they're doing the same thing for energy generation and usage in general using Opticaster. According to Tesla, quote, the automaker says that it is using its machine learning expertise to deliver several features, price forecasting, 
load forecasting, generation forecasting, dispatch optimization, and smart bidding, end quote. So basically it's projecting prices, it's projecting the load needs, right? So it's stabilizing the grid, and it's projecting the generation capabilities of electrical plants around it plus itself. And then it takes all of that information and it uses it to make bids at precisely the right time to generate money for these companies. So on a commercial level, auto bidder using Opticaster AI is able to stabilize the grid by knowing ahead of time when electricity will be needed and when there's extra around. Plus, of course, like I said, there's no need for peaker plants anymore, and batteries are also way, way faster to deploy than plants that have to ramp up capacity. In other words, they can flip on and off again in microseconds. And of course, these companies are actually earning money while they're doing all of this. Quote, on Tuesday, in the latest series of tests, the Hornsdale battery, which is in Australia, did a rapid 270 megawatt flip from charging at 120 megawatts to discharging at 150 megawatts. It appears to have flipped between the two on several different occasions, at least one of which had an immediate impact on the wholesale price of electricity, pushing it down to the peppercorn price of just above $8 per megawatt hour. So essentially the software is so fast and the batteries are so fast that it can continuously flip back and forth from buying to selling electricity instantaneously almost. And that whole thing is so big and has such a massive impact that it actually affects the price of electricity overall, which is pretty amazing. By moving services away from fossil fuel power plants, Naon's Tesla Big Battery, the Hornsdale power plant in Australia, saved over $150 million in its first two years of operations, paying for itself. And that's also pretty phenomenal to get back the amount that you put out the capital expenditure in such a short period of time for energy. If you built a gas or coal powered plant, it would take decades. And nuclear, I don't even know how long it takes to recoup the cost of that because it's so expensive. Now, of course, Tesla obviously takes a cut of all this, though the exact terms are not known at present. So, so that's for commercial. What about for us normal folks? Well, first of all, auto bidder is not available for us yet. Too bad. However, we could pretty much do these things manually on an individual basis. The bigger issue right now is that utility companies have to agree to buy back your energy. This is not uncommon for people with solar roofs, but I don't know exactly how that works for people with just batteries. So let's look at my case in Georgia. The average rate in Georgia is 5.67 cents per kilowatt hour if you use energy at the same rate all day. But using energy cleverly, you can reduce that cost a lot. As I've mentioned in other videos, we have a one penny per kilowatt hour overnight rate, which is 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. Then we have seven cents per kilowatt hour off peak, which is most of the other hours, and 20 cents per kilowatt hour on peak, which is June through September from two o'clock to seven o'clock PM. Again, when it's very, very hot in Georgia and air conditioning in particular is being used a lot. So just with energy savings without the arbitrage stuff, just by purchasing power, right? Sucking up the power overnight, charging the battery, and then utilizing that battery during the day, we could save somewhere around $1,900 a year for us in our household. And with the incentives, the costs are somewhere around $8,500 to install. So it could be paid off in about five years without even using energy arbitrage. So basically you could use a power wall to not buy power at expensive times, but instead feed your house with those batteries during expensive times. Unfortunately, super sadly, you cannot buy this by itself anymore. You have to buy it with a solar panel system. And that's a bummer because actually we were looking into purchasing one. As I've talked about before, we just don't know that we're gonna be living in this house long enough to make the solar make sense, but the batteries we could move with us, so that would make a ton of sense. But unfortunately, Tesla's gotten rid of that as an option, so I hope they reintroduce it eventually so we can just buy the batteries by themselves. But anyway, with energy arbitrage, we could pay this off much, much faster, a hypothetical one at least. That is, of course, assuming that Tesla ever officially offers a battery pack again by itself and also allows consumers to use auto bidder software. If so, we could buy power on the cheap overnight rates and then sell them back at the higher rates, particularly during the summer, that, that June to September area, where, you know, even if the power company only paid us a half of the going rate or 3.5 cents off peak or 10 cents on peak, we'd still make a killing buying and selling power, right? So we could buy it up at one penny per kilowatt hour. And during the summer, we could sell it for say 10 cents a kilowatt hour. We would be making nine cents per kilowatt hour for the entire time that we were 
you know, generating electricity for the grid. What this would allow is for every consumer to become their own little energy company, buying and selling power, doing energy arbitrage, etc. And of course, this would help take peak loads off of power companies. It would also help with outages, and it would help to decentralize and stabilize the grid overall. So of course, this is all to the good, but we need the batteries and we need the software. Come on, Tesla, let us consumers who can't commit to solar on our roofs at least have battery packs back so we can help make the grid better and make money at the same time. All right, I hope you enjoyed this episode and found it fun and informative. And for those who had asked me this question, I hope it helps to answer the question. If you did enjoy the video, definitely like it so other people can find it and be sure to subscribe for more of this. As always, a huge thank you to my patrons on Patreon. You all are wonderful. Thank you all so much for your support. I really appreciate it. And of course, don't forget about our merch store, which has the Don't Mess With Tesla t-shirt, plus a whole bunch of other t-shirts and mugs and other things. So check it out. And finally, don't forget we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you look in the description, you can click on a link and go shopping and help out the channel. Thank you. In the meantime, please do feel free to ask me questions in the comments or at my email address, which is drknowitallknows at gmail.com. Till next time, bye-bye.